So I'm trying new places to record, even though I'm still in the kitchen, uh, more of my body is showing, and maybe if uh, Riley's walking around, you'll see her, but <laughs> so funny. There are some days where I let her out of the crate. She's instantly like wanting to play, so she's like flipping in, like bouncing around, and then downward dogging and all that. So what I find really fun to do when she's like that is I get her really riled up, right? I just like freaking get her very amped up. She runs towards the living room, and then I just go hide somewhere in the house. I mentioned uh, before in a past vlog how much I love doing this and it's really funny to me because I go hide somewhere and I hear her coming around trying to look for me. You hear her pausing, looking around like what the fuck is going on and I, hey puppers, come in the frame. Oh hi. Hi. Oh, your breath smells today. I need to give you a greenie later. But basically, I <laughs> now I know what it feels like. Oh, hello, stinky. Now I know what it feels like when people are in a scary movie and they're trying to hold their breath because when she's trying to find me and I'm like stuck somewhere. Yeah, so people in scary movies, you know when they're trying to hold their breath or like very, breathe very quietly even though they're very scared and nervous? So I'm trying to do that when I'm trying not to laugh around the house so she doesn't hear me, so she has more time trying to find me. And it is so freaking hard. Like it's, it's so hard to do that. I just thought that was a very interesting comparison because when that happens to me, wow, just lying down. When that happens to me, I just feel like, I think of that right? every single time. I think of the scary movies where people are trying to be quiet and it's very hard not to. So I know for a fact, if someone's trying to find me in the real world and they're trying to kill me, I will not be able to hold my breath very well. But maybe the more I play with this one, I'll have more practice <laughs> not to make noise when I'm trying hard. Dota is starting earlier tonight, starting at 7 o'clock, which is like in 20 minutes, which is great. Um, I, I actually love, I would love for Dota to always start at 7. It's like right when I get home from work and it gives me something to do all night. But um, I have two more freshly meals left. So I will probably eat one tonight because I'm freaking lazy. And I finished, I finished Murder of Roger Ackroyd last night and I feel so happy to finish it. It was a wonderful book. I will try to say nothing about it because I don't want to spoil anything. If people want to read it, I think it was very, honestly, like at this point, I feel like any Agatha Christie book I read won't suck because so far they have just been entertaining. They're suspenseful where you don't really predict who it is. Um, I am the type of person that doesn't really spend any time while reading trying to guess because I'm just like interested in getting through the book. So I uh, don't actually spend time trying to put clues together or try to beat Poirot and figuring out who the murderer was. But uh, now that that book is done, I am going to start Oh man, I stuck my foot earlier because I was like trying to run away from her, trying to hide somewhere and I like caught it against the wall and it freaking hurts. But anyways, I took the cover off. Um, I showed this book in my other vlog, but this is Laurence Olivier's autobiography. For those people that don't necessarily look at my blog, I did write about him very briefly, but basically he is just a very well-known actor during the 1900s. The movie that I know him from is Rebecca, which is a movie directed by Alfred Hitchcock in 1940. And I, I really like that movie. Joan Fontaine is in that too, and she's freaking beautiful. But um, yeah, so this is just his book about his life. And he uh, writes quite a lot in it. He talks about his marriage to Vivian Lee, and she, um, she had bipolar disorder, so unfortunately, uh, she was well known for being hard to work with because of her outbursts and stuff like that, but I would be really interested to see what he kind of writes about or what he says about her during that period and um, I'm just I'm a big fan of 
these autobiographies because it really allows you to get to know them better. All I know about him is his looks and that's pretty much it and you know I uh, I just really learn a lot just from reading stuff like this. Um, I definitely learned a lot about Maria Sharapova. I actually didn't know she came from a poor family before she became very uh, famous, before she won her first Grand Slam and stuff like that. So I think when you realize how much effort they put into what they finally were able to obtain, you really start to see them differently. Like for most people, when you hear of these number one players, you know them as number one and you don't know them as 10 years of struggling, training, um, relocating from Russia to the United States and stuff like that. So when you um, get those facts from their books, you definitely see them in a different light. And I like that different light that you see them in because you realize that every time I'm recording, someone is like messaging me or inviting me on Steam, but I can't play Dota today because I'm going to watch Dota. Anyways, yes, I'm excited to read this. It's actually quite long. It's like 300, 350 pages roughly. So I will start it. It'll probably take me a while, especially considering how long Akroy took, but I'm very happy to start it. Good Lord. I'm just hanging out with Riley. Today, all right, that's enough looking at her. So today I finally brought my shoes to the cobbler and actually, um, supposedly it was a procedure that could be done in one day. He said I could pick them up that same day, but I didn't want to go to that area during rush hour. And plus he's only cash, cash only. Oh, I hate cash only so much. Like, honestly, I use so much brain power trying to map out like where I have to go for an ATM or where I'm gonna get my cash before I go there. And you guys probably already know or will know that I am a mega planner. I plan everything. So this morning, for some reason, I was talking to Shane about motorcycle gear and wanting my stuff to match because as silly as it sounds the fact that the shades of pink on my gear don't match kind of bothers me from the ideal outfit I'm thinking of so randomly I was thinking about gear and then I started thinking about started thinking about something else and then suddenly I came across the idea that I wanted to powder coat my rims. So this was something that I actually thought about like years ago, like when, whenever I would look around at pictures of the ideal color combination of my motorcycle, I've always thought of white and pink. So that's pretty much why I decided to buy a white bike. Um, the decals on my bike, I am probably going to take off if I do powder coat, but basically I just want a solid color of light pink on my rims because I've seen a picture once and I will include it here also of one that looked pretty cool. Um, I'm not gonna get it exactly like this bike because they have you know markings and maybe a separate decal on the body of the bike that I'm not going to want. And right now, since my decals are black and yellow, I don't wanna keep them if I get my powder coating because then it won't match. But anyways, I randomly came up with the idea this morning that I was like, you know what, maybe I will see the pricing to get this done. So I checked some places, I asked them for their price, and they said that for two tires, or two rims basically, it would cost $150. And at first I was like, damn, that's not even that expensive. But then I didn't realize because I just assumed that these shops would disassemble it for you. So they said that you know they only receive the parts and do the powder coating they don't do anything else so i spent a bunch of time thinking up or looking up options for how i can remove the wheels from my bike then disassemble the wheel with all the bearings and stuff take all that out so they would only get the rims and 
oh my gosh, like <laughs> I was so excited for this prospect that I spent so much of my effort today trying to plan this out. And then I pretty much came with I pretty much came up with two options. So the first option is apparently just down the street from the powder coating place, there's a motorsport place that would disassemble my bike for me, let me store it there just for the day, and then they would reassemble it for me as well. And they quoted me at $225, which honestly doesn't sound that bad, but total that would make my entire procedure roughly 375 but yes the other option that i was thinking of to potentially lower the cost but i don't really know if it'll be that much lower is to have my coworker help me out because he is someone that likes to work with cars he is very good or he just knows all of this mechanical stuff so i was thinking that i would buy stands because you need to raise the front and rear end of the bike to do this work, I would buy the stands and I would buy any tools that he might not have. And then after he helped me remove my wheel, I still had to bring my wheels to some place to disassemble them because I don't think he is very comfortable disassembling the wheel because it seems like a pain in the ass job. And um, I just wouldn't want him to do it if he's not confident. So the stands would cost like $110 and then some of the tools. So after that, I would still have to take it to some place to disassemble. And I kind of imagine that costing like $100 or something for them to disassemble. So total, the cost is still pretty similar. Um, the thing about buying stands though, is that most likely I will need them in the future. So it's not like a wasted expense, but I guess I'm just thinking like overall in terms of effort, um, having my coworker help me out is kind of like a three-step process where it's like remove a tire, disassemble the wheel, and then bring it to the powder coating place. Whereas if I just brought it to that place to disassemble everything for me and let me store my bike there, it feels more like a two-step process because I just bring my stuff there, they'll do it for me, and then I bring the stuff to the powder coating place. Like, I don't know if people are following me and I don't know if people really care, but um, yeah, I just like, I just randomly have moments or days where I just come up with an idea randomly and I obsess over it. So honestly, today, I kind of obsessed over it a little too hard because I think when I first asked the pricing of the powder coating and heard it was 150, I think I was like stupid for a second and thinking that the removal of the tire and removal of the disassembling of the wheel was not going to be that costly so i think i kind of got my hopes up with that 150 dollars price tag before realizing that it was actually way more expensive than i expected hello so right now it's in between matches and um next up is lgd versus liquid a best of three but i think i have like a little bit of time and since i am pretty much going to just be like lounging around and not doing anything but watching Dota, I figured that I would try to put this on my hair. So I've heard of this um, throughout the years. It's called Olaplex, it says hair perfector. And this is apparently to repair and strengthen your hair. So um, I guess just to give a little background for people that are not aware of women's hair troubles. Um, so, <sighs> I guess it really depends on what type of person you are, but for me personally, I think that the way my hair looks is generally pretty important to me. So I feel like on the days where I don't blow dry it or make my hair look nice, I tend to feel just less confident and I, my mood might be a little bit associated with like the way I perceive myself and how I feel. So like if I don't do my hair, I kind of feel like I look like garbage that day, so I tend to, I don't know, it does something to my mood. It's like not a negative thing, but like it definitely affects it in some way. So just in general, it does often feel like a lot of the ways to get your hair looking like nice and smooth and not frizzy include heat. So in the past, um, when I was younger, 
I used to always use a straightener or a curling iron like every single day and that would be after I blow dry my hair. So that's a lot of heat and damage to your hair and after a while your hair just gets like really freaking messed up, split ends. Like um, it's just really noticeable for people that recognize it. So for example, like this is the most random example ever, but um, the other day, uh, one of the Dota 2 pro players, I saw a picture that he posted on Instagram of his girlfriend and the first thing I noticed was that her ends were so freaking dry and they were like not healthy and you could just tell. So like even though I think a fair amount of women don't try or they don't like maintain their hair very well, like they let it grow out very long but it's not healthy, their ends aren't healthy. Um, Sometimes I feel like, I guess you don't notice stuff like that unless you are aware of it. So anyways, um, that's kind of why I am trying my best to use less heat on my hair. Sometimes it's a little hard. My arm's getting tired, but yeah, I still end up blow drying my hair pretty often. Um, the days that I don't are like the ultra hermit days where I'm just home all day, so I'll just let it air dry. Or if I decide to ride, I try not to blow dry my hair at all because I'm like, I'm gonna be wearing a helmet four times today. It's gonna mess up my hair. So like, there's no point for me to try to get it to look nice. But anyways, like using a lot of heat on your hair is just damaging your hair constantly. So using products like this will probably help um, minimize the damage or kind of like slow it down, I would imagine. Uh, this also supposedly works really well for women that really like to color their hair. And even though like coloring my hair does appeal to me, I, I like it because it seems like it's experimental. Like there are some colors like maybe red that I haven't tried in a while. The one time I tried it was in high school and it turned out awful because I wanted a subtle red and my mom was like, oh my God, you can't even notice this red, like make it really pop. So it was a freaking bright ass red and looked fucking awful. But anyways, um, yeah, so in order to keep my hair healthy though, even though um, coloring my hair is something that I like and would like to do, I'm probably going to try to not do it because I want to keep my hair healthy and um, coloring it is kind of counterproductive to that. So anyways, for this apparently I need to like wet my hair, make sure it's damp, and then towel dry and then I just leave this in. But I will have to wash my hair after. Okay. So, my hair is damp and towel dried. Um, I was like lazy, I guess. I didn't feel like getting in the shower. So I just like dunked my head in the sink, which might not have been the best idea because now I have like a lot of my hair feels all tangled. And it sucks. I hate it when my hair is like this freaking long hair. It's, ugh. Anyways, okay, so I'm going to put generous amounts of this in my hair once I remove the seal. There we go, nice and easy. Okay, let's see. Apply a generous amount from scalp to ends until hair is thoroughly saturated. So uh, let me squeeze a lot out. Okay. I will leave this on for hours until I am done watching Dota and ready for sleep, I guess. Hello, it's Thursday and I took a half day because this morning I may have spontaneously decided to get my uh, motorcycle rims powder coated light pink so I need to go to drop my bike off to get it disassembled and then um, the powder coating place can pick up my rims because it's right down the street so they kind of wanted me to uh... <coughs> they wanted me <laughs> to um, drop my bike off before 2 o'clock it's 1.15 right now, it's about like a 20 minute ride. So I'm going to ride there, drop my bike off, and then Uber home. So I'm in a rush, I gotta go. Hello.
for some reason, for some reason, I feel kind of drowsy today. Like I feel crappy. So I dropped off my bike. I kind of told them exactly what I wanted. He mentioned that new bearings for my motorcycle might require them to order some. So even if they disassemble it today and get the rims over to the powder coating people, it might take me more than just a day to get all of this done, which is fine. I just wanted to make sure I got everything um, started. And I took an Uber home. Uh, it was a pool, so somebody else joined in later on, but freaking, I don't like Uber. I think for some reason, um, maybe it's because I haven't ridden in a car with somebody else in a freaking long time. Like, trust me, I don't ride in other people's cars like ever, very rarely. I'm usually the one driving and I don't really know if that me makes that much of a difference, but Sometimes I just notice that if I'm the passenger, I don't feel very good. I get car sick. So I kind of feel a little weird after that, but um, it's really nice today. So I definitely plan on napping before Dota at seven because I will try to watch all of the stuff today, but um, I had a very crappy morning walk with Riley. So now that I have the rest of the day to myself, I will take a long walk with this cutie puppers. Puppers. Perky ears. Wow. Hey. Good girl. So weak. Alrighty. Good evening. So right now I am in the middle of watching Dota. Um, VP just won their best of one in the lower bracket. So they are going to play later tonight in a best of three against whoever wins this next match. So I did nap earlier to try to prepare for this. I did the last dungeon that I didn't do yet in alpha. So I've done all of them. And I was considering healing some as holy, but I don't know. These dungeons are really, 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 really boring. So I don't think I will. Um, played one game of Dota, and now here we are with a whole night of Dota prepared. I'm so excited to get my bike back. Oh yes, and I did ask them if they could remove the decals. My bike has like the R3 sticker on it and it has um, black and yellow stripes on it. And I mean, it looks fine, but it won't really match my theme of white and pink. So I actually think like a pure white on top with the decals removed might look really cool. Um, maybe later on down the line, if I can think of a really nice design I want on my bike, the body, then I will possibly do it but for now i think with the rims it'll look so sweet and then i will look like the ultimate white and pink rider on the road like every single rider on the road i see they're wearing black and i must be like a sore thumb that sticks out and it's probably super obvious that i'm a female on the road because they see pink and they're like definitely a girl but yes this next match is about to start and that was my exciting day I can't wait to show you guys what the result is like. <laughs>